Okay, so what I want to do in this video is highlight some of the common sort of issues that uh, people who are getting started with React run into. And there's going to be six or so issues here. Uh, most of these are going to be code based except for one. And here we have our React site. It's very basic. We just have one simple component, which is called level up, where you can see it's just test.js with an H1 that says level up. Okay, so this first issue that I'm going to cover is something that you might encounter while just typing your code. We have a couple of divs here, and then maybe we say, well, let's go ahead and also include a button in this component. And you can say, yo, into this button, and we can save it. And if you're not used to React, you might expect this to work. And if you have used React in some sort of time, you know that there's going to be an error here. Now, this is because you cannot place adjacent JSX elements without wrapping them in something. And that sort of sucks, right? It's a bummer to have to wrap things in a div, especially if you don't want to div in there for your markup. Now, luckily there's a solution for this. This is a fundamental issue with how JSX compiles down to JavaScript. Now, luckily in the most recent versions of React, uh, this has been sort of solved in a handful of different ways before you were just have to suck it up and wrap everything in a div, okay, and call it a day. But the answer for this now is to use something called fragments. We have access to a new component called react.fragment. And react fragment is simply going to be a wrapper that does not output any kind of markup. So instead of having to add an extra div to your code, you can now add your stuff in react.fragment. Now keep in mind, you do need to import react to use react.fragment. Fragment. Now let's check out our site here. You can see we now have level up and yo. And if we were to check out the source, there's no additional sort of wrapping component. Okay. So this is the preferred way now of getting around this rather than wrapping your code in an extra extraneous markup. However, there is another solution that is also React Fragments, but with React Fragments with a shorthand. Now, the best way to use React Fragments with a shorthand is to have your tooling set up correctly. To use the new syntax for fragments, we simply just need to remove anything between our JSX code and save it like this. Now, if we head to our site here, we can see we have a big old error. Now, the caveat here is that fragments are awesome and this syntax for fragments is awesome. However, out of the box, Create React App isn't using the latest versions of Babel. So even in their documentation, React still says to use react.fragment. So if you want to figure out how you can get yours configured, because I personally love the shorthand, I use the shorthand all over my code, uh, you keep clicking, click many tools do not support yet. You can see that to get support, we simply need to be using the latest Babel uh, 7 beta 31 and above. Uh, now Babel with these version comes with its own pitfalls. Uh, you can see that you can just simply add it like this. I honestly don't know what the process for adding it to create React app is. I haven't used it. If you're using Webpack or any of this stuff, I, I, I should say that using these latest versions of Babel is kind of a headache if you haven't done it before. But if you are on these latest versions of Babel already or are willing to do the work, using this shorthand syntax for fragments is excellent because it doesn't take up a ton of space. Okay, I'm going to undo that and just save this like this. So that's the first pitfall is trying to output adjacent elements when you could be using React fragments instead of wrapping your stuff in a div. Now, the next one is going to be fairly common as well. We can do on click is going to be equal to and we can say run func. Okay, and let's have run func up top here and we can say run func and run func is going to be a function where we do this dot set state and we want to say let's just say like a nav open is equal to true okay so this is a very simple function here that we should be running and uh, i'm sorry this needs to be this dot run func not just run func uh, so we want to say this dot run func we're going to run this function and set the state okay so if we come to our code it looks fine looks fine let me open up my console here so we can see that this is not going to work let me open up my console there we go and hit yo and you can see we get a big old error and as well as we get another big old error in here, cannot read property set state of undefined. Now, typically you might think what the heck is up with this because this is how we have always done it if you were to use the create element sort of version of React. However, to properly access this inside of this kind of function, especially on an on click here, 
you have a couple of strategies. Now in the past, the solution was to do dot bind and then pass in this, like this. Okay, then we're binding the context of this into this function. And if we were to try this now and click yo, you can see we can get it without any errors. However, this syntax to me has always been a little bit clunky. And there have been some alternatives such as running a arrow function in here. However, this has proved to be not the most performant option. What we can do now is say run func is going to be equal to an arrow function, just like this. So check out this new code here where we say run func is now equal to an arrow function. This will give us correct access to state. And let's check it out. When I refresh, I can select yo. And if we were to do a react dev tools, um, inspect on this thing, and we were to check it out inside of test, you could see the state has been set open to true. Okay, so this is a common pitfall that this dot set state, uh, this is not defined, cannot set state of undefined. Okay, so this is the ideal modern solution to this thing, although the solution for what you do in here has changed like eight times, so who knows if it will change again in the future. Uh, but right now, this is the preferred way of doing it if you need to access this dot set state. Okay, next we have an issue that really stems from the evolution of React. And uh, this is not necessarily uh, something that you need to worry about if you're using the latest Create React app, as well as the tools and stuff like that. But the problem here is what happens if you start following a tutorial, you come into your new file, and instead of doing a new Create class, we start coming in here and we say react.create. And then we have a function and an object and inside of here, we have a render function. And some of this stuff looks very similar and there's some differences of how we actually wrote code like this. Uh, and you might be thinking, hey, what's wrong with this? The problem is, is that this is no longer the syntax. Uh, so if you are using react.create class, what you wanna be doing is bouncing on over to the class component name extends component syntax, where we have a class instead of a function to create our components. So using outdated syntax is a common gotcha that people run into when they see older tutorials that use things like react.create class. So you always wanna make sure you're using the latest uh, class syntax here. My recommendation is to get a React snippet library, especially if you're using something like a text editor here or any of these things. Let me just see which one I have installed. I have React native snippets. I have ES7, React Redux, GraphQL, React snippets. This one, um, this one's excellent because you can come in here and I can just say RCC for React create class. And then here we go, gets you everything perfectly. Okay, so uh, my recommendation is to always be using the latest syntax for React. The last thing you want your code to be is out of date for when a new version of React comes out and then you can't take advantage of some of the performance increases, right? So using an old and outdated syntax is a common gotcha. Now let's talk about another one here. Let's say we have a component here and let's remove this export default here. What we're going to be seeing here is an error that says type is invalid, expected. Uh, let's see. And this error can be manifested in different ways. You might be seeing something like it expected uh, a React create element expected a different type or something like that. Now, this kind of error happens because you have issues in your exporting. For instance, in this case, we're importing the default import, but we do not have a default export. We simply just have the export. Or if you have something like export default class test, and then inside of here, you're importing test inside of brackets. This is a fundamental issue with importing and exporting in JavaScript and something that can happen all the time. If you are seeing that your component is not being imported correctly, In fact, here's the error that I'm talking about. Element type is invalid, expected a string for built-in components or a class function for composite components, but got undefined. That error, if you are getting that error, 
that means there is something incorrect with your import or your export. So if you are ever seeing that error where it's expecting something different, then that means that React is not getting a component when you're attempting to use it down here, and therefore it's going to error out. So my suggestion is to head to your component file, confirm what you are exporting, in this case, export default. So head here first to confirm what you're exporting, and then come to your component that you're using it in, and then confirm what you're importing it in to make sure that it's correct. Okay, so if you're getting any sort of error that ever looks like that, this is what you want to do to fix it. Okay, check out your imports and exports. Now, the last one is not going to be a code issue, but an issue with project planning and things like that. A lot of people like to reach for Redux really quickly. Now, Redux is a library for state management across your application, it allows you to share state all around your application in different sorts of ways. In fact, there's a Redux level up tutorials course. I'm absolutely not anti Redux. I like Redux quite a bit. However, in a basic application, you don't always need to use Redux. If your application is going to get large and your state's going to get potentially unruly, then using something like Redux as a library to manage your state could become a good idea. And for the most part, you don't even need any sort of overall state management. However, if you do need some state management here or there, React 16.3 now provides the official context API, which means that you can actually have a provider and a consumer inside of your application without using an external library, allowing you to pass a state from component to component without having to have some sort of parent child relationship, allowing for state management that is a little bit more than what React has out of the box and a little bit less than what Redux does. So if you need some state management, but you don't need to go crazy with it, check out the new React Context API uh, for learning that. I think Wes Boss has a great video on that. Uh, so check that out and you can see examples on how you can manage your state with something like Context. So to rattle through these again once more, it's trying to use adjacent JSX elements without something like fragments. Another solution is to output this in arrays instead of uh, just in JSX. But to be honest, the array solution is ugly. I would always go for fragments if I were you. Uh, another one is using this.setState in a function without properly having context to this. Another one is using outdated or old syntax. So you want to be using the latest ES7 React syntax, the stuff that you get sort of out of the box with Create React app. Next is going to be having incorrect imports and exports, therefore getting some sort of error where React does not see that you have an actual component and is saying, hey, your type is invalid. Um, and the last one is needing something like an external library for state management way too soon before you need it, adding additional complexity into your project that might not need to be there. Now, if you have additional React gotchas, post them into the comments. I want to see what kind of standard gotchas people run into. Now, a lot of the stuff is people coming to React because this sort of system is a little bit different, I'm going to say, than a lot of other systems that people have worked with in the past, right? So there's a lot of unusual things that you have to do, and they, they become less unusual after you do them and you start to understand. Not only that, but they'll make you better at JavaScript overall, okay? So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you would like to learn more about React, head on over to leveluptutorials.com and you can check out all of these awesome pro series. I just released a new series this month using uh, Headless WordPress with Gatsby and Next.js that uses React in all sorts of different ways with WordPress, Pro Gatsby for static site generation. I also have React 16 for everyone, which is a series teaching you all of the core fundamental skills for React. So check it out, leveluptutorials.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.